Hello friends, welcome to the channel IT Simplified. Hope you're having a good time with your family and friends and liking these sessions. In today's video in Azure, I'm here to talk about a zone to zone disaster recovery all by using Azure Site Recovery. So as you know that ASR has matured over time. It is one of the fastest growing services within Azure portfolio, just because of the fact that it can cater to different operating system and different uh, deployment scenario. So whether you have physical or virtualized workload on-prem, you'll be able to migrate that to Azure. It can be on a Hyper-V, VMware. You can have either Windows or Linux operating system. Or even if you have workloads in some of the third-party uh, public cloud, you'll be able to use ASR and bring it over to Azure. Now, building on the same capability now, you have uh, option of using zone-to-zone -zone disaster recovery, and that is what we're going to talk about. So as you know that uh, Azure region can consist of multiple zones. And this is one of the only prerequisite of this deployment is that a region which has availability zones and if you have a VM deployed within that zone, you'll be able to use this option. So taking the example of the deployment that I have, so I'm talking about a region named Canada Central, which has availability zones option and availability zones consist of multiple zone and think of it as multiple data center. And you can deploy your VM within these zones. So in case the complete data center goes down, you can fail over your machine within the same region in a separate zone. So for example, if I have a machine, say for example, in zone one, right, and this, uh, data center goes down, I can fail over that machine to maybe zone two and zone three and make sure that my business is still up and running and clients are able to access services. So with that in place, let me just show you the environment that I have. For this demonstration, I have two machines, C1 and test VM. And you can see both of them, they're running state and the location for that one is Canada Central. But there is one difference between the two. If I can go and expand C1, you can see that it is associated with Canada Central, but it's not deployed in any availability zone. Whereas the test VM that I have, it is deployed in zone one. That is a major difference. And that's a prerequisite in order to utilize this. You need to have machine deployed in one of the availability zone. So let me go back to the machine, which doesn't have that capability. Uh, if I go under operation and disaster recovery you can see disaster recovery between availability zone is grayed out so i can only fail over this machine in one of the other region not within the same region because my machine is not within the availability zone whereas if i go to my test vm which is deployed in zone one and try to achieve same i have both options available so you see disaster recovery between availability zone is not grayed out so i can fail over this say for example from canada central to east us if i want i can pick some other region that's not a problem but the important thing here is that i can also fail over within the same region in separate zone and that is the beauty of this option and it also helps you in a way that uh, it is faster failover because it is within the same region and secondly uh, you don't need to create virtual networks all the, from scratch, which you have to do otherwise when you're failing over between region, right? So that's one thing. So with that in place, you have selected that it's in availability zone. I can go to next, which is advanced settings. And here you can see that I have the target setting, my subscription. So that's the source information. VM resource group is test RG, test VNet. It's in availability zone. I have this option failing over two, two or three. One is grayed out because obviously it is in already in zone one. So I can I either fail over in zone two or in zone three. I can also have a proximity placement group, but uh, that is not what I require. And uh, other thing, if you look at the target, I can pick the same virtual network. So my source VM is in test VNet. I can deploy the machine within the same virtual network i don't need to create a separate uh, vnet if i want i can do that definitely i can deploy this in other virtual network but uh, i don't need to i can uh, fill out this machine in the same vnet 
and I can do further configuration from the storage. You can see I can pick my source and my replicated managed disk. I can also specify the replication settings if you look at and I can also add extensions I want. Now I just want to point out this is one way of doing it, right? And you can see from this interface, there's some limitations in terms of replication policy. Now you can achieve the same thing. For example, if I go and type in recovery service vault, as you know, recovery service vault is the engine behind whether you're using Azure backup services or business continuity model. I have this recovery service vault here and I can go get started. And because my machines are within Azure, I can go and enable replication. And I get some more options over here. So I can pick same thing, my source, my source subscription, source resource group, disaster recovery between availability zone. I can pick yes and no. And availability zone, this is my source. So it's uh, zone number one. And if I go to next, you can see that it automatically populates my machine. So that's the one I want to replicate and go to next. And here I can specify which zone I want to uh, replicate this, whether two or three. And I can customize my target subscription. If you have multiple, you can pick one or the other, but I have only one. So let's go and click on okay. And uh, I can now customize my resource group, network storage and availability. So let's go and expand this. So you can specify target resource group. If you don't have already, which you want to replicate, it will automatically create one, but I can pick the one which is already existing. Same thing for the VNet. And uh, I will automatically pick my source managed disk. It will have to create a replica managed disk and a cache storage. Now, in my case, I only have one disk, which is an OS disk, but if you have multiple, and if you want to deselect in any of the data disks, which you might not want to replicate, you can do that. But in this case, you can see it's grayed out because I only have one disk in my case, right? And same thing about the uh, PPG, you can also have, but uh, I'm not gonna use it. And uh, one other thing I want to specify here is that uh, source managed disk. So my source disk is premium tier. If you want, I can either use a standard and uh, HDD or standard SSD. So I have this flexibility. I don't need to just pick the one which is in the source. I can uh, tweak on the, on the target side, right? So I can make changes here and uh, click on OK. And for the replication policy, I can customize that too. And you can see I can pick the recovery point retention. The maximum that Azure provides you is between 24 to 72 hours. So if I want, I can go back 48 hours, I believe. I can also go 72 hours. If I want to go 73, it won't let me because that's the maximum I can go, right? Yeah, it's grayed out. So max I can go is 72, which is great. I have application consistent snapshot frequency. Uh, I can switch it off or I can go all the way up to 12 hours. So I can change it according to my requirement and you can also have multi VM consistency. So basically, if you have multiple VMs like a front end and you have a database in the back end, if you want to spin those in sequence, you can always do that. In my case, it won't uh, require because uh, I don't have that. And the moment I click on enable replication, it will start replicating and based on how much data you have, it will take some time. And then you have all those option of uh, doing a test failover, like a fire, uh, failover drill, or you can do actual failover in case something happens to your uh, zone number one in which your production VM was. So this is a new capability that uh, Azure has added to their Azure Site Recovery portfolio, basically zone to zone DR. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.